Hello and welcome to this accomplished beginner's blender tutorial number 17. In this we will look at using a lamp with sun properties as illumination in our model and of course you can imagine that the sun is meant to help rendering scenes that depict what we could call outdoor scenarios. There's no such thing as outdoor in a digital world, of course, but uh, I think you get the point. Um, the sun has similar lamp properties as the Hemi, like this, but also the sun has sky and atmosphere properties, and it has shadow properties. You can have no shadow or ray shadow and if you have chosen ray shadow you need to have ray tracing turned on for the shadows to be actually cast on the in the model. The multitude of parameters here under sky and atmosphere are, can be quite a challenge. Most of them deal with you can say haze or uh, light dispersion through the atmosphere. Of course, if you don't turn on the sky sky rendering, then you will just have the sky that you get with your normal uh, Blender background that you activate here. And uh, since we're talking about it, we can actually take this opportunity to to set the sky. I'll set the horiz horizontal color or a horizon color really dark blue, uh, maybe even darker blue than that like this and, um, and just leave it at that. Let's look at the sun. So if we turn on the sky you'll get some form, either you can uh, set your own sky setting or you can use a, uh, a pre-compiled, you can have the classic where, where the sun is a little bit more faded out or d desert or mountain. And I'm, I will use mountain because it uh, is easier to see where the sun is actually rendered in this particular exercise. And then you can use the atmosphere settings. And depending on the intensity of the sun and scattering, you'll have more haze or less. So these parameters is something that you'll have to work with in your own models to figure out exactly what it is that you want. But the meat of this tutorial is not so much the looks of it, it's more the orientation of the sun or the fact that the placement, the location of the sun has no meaning in, in this case. It's only the rotation of the sun that has meaning. So it doesn't matter where I place it in this model. The illumination will be exactly the same. Now the rotation is zero, 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 and uh, we can simply just uh, look through the camera and render it. And you can see that the light is coming from above, straight from above. So that's if you have x, y, z, zero, then you get the, the sun in zenith. And we can just move, move it to the other side here. Do the same thing and render, you get the exact same result, no difference. So the location has no meaning. That's that's one of the first thing that you kind of have to wrap your head around because when you're working with a, a point light, that that mean location has a lot of meaning because it determines from where the the light rays are coming. Not in this case. In this case, it's only the rotation of the of the light that has meaning. And you can see here, there's a little dashed line underneath it, and that dashed line indicates in what direction the light is coming, how it's actually, how it's being propagated. So to be able to understand this a little bit better and to be able to find out 
if if the sun is going to show in my camera view, I devised a little little help tool here, and that's this elongated cube. I just uh, added a cube uh, and stretched it out or, or scaled it in the Z direction and marked the tips with orange and the, uh, with an orange and a blue material. So it works a little bit like the needle on a compass. The next thing to do was to add a constraint. I copied the location of this bar to the camera. So it will always copy the location of the camera. So if I move the camera around, oh, sorry, not that, the camera, if I move the camera, it's, it will follow. And then it copies the rotation of the sun. So let's say we select the sun and then we rotate it, in this case, in the X direction because the camera is looking that way. So if I change, if I rotate around the X axis, I will change the elevation of this little dashed line here. And this bar will follow. So we'll do R, X, and then we'll just decide to change that a little bit. And then I'll render that. And you can see that now the light that is hitting these cubes here is actually casting a shadow on this side here a little bit more. It's not very vis it's not very clear, but I'll make it clearer. I arranged for another camera that is looking crosswise. So we'll choose that camera as a render, and I'll render that. And then you can see that, yes, there is, there is this um, cast shadow. And the sun is coming from our left there. To go back to the other camera. And uh, we, we can't really tell where the sun is coming from because it's not visible yet. But we'll rotate this a little bit further, R, X, and rotate. And I'll rotate this until that orange tip is well within, or this bar here is well within the viewfinder of the camera. And maybe I should uh, mention that I've increased the size of the camera to 30. So it's very, it's, it's projected size, or the representation of the camera is much larger than you usually have it. And that's just to be able to more easily see what actually will appear in the camera viewfinder. So now we'll look through this and I'll press F12 and it renders. And here where this orange um, dot is or this orange marker is, that's also where the sun is. And I'll show you a little bit more about this orange and the, or this um, bar, this help tool. look at it specifically. You can press uh, forward slash to go into local mode and look at this here. It's just a regular cube that has been stretched out and there's different materials and then the, we'll look at the material slot and here the material number two or point zero zero two is in the middle and it is a completely transparent C transparency uh, material and it has no intensity and no specular intensity whatsoever so it will just go be be completely transparent of course and I'll press forward slash again to go back to the global view and of course this is just a help tool and you want to remove it you know when you're when your model is all done or move it to another another layer that is not visible or whatever you want to do to to not have it to be in the way. But while you're working on this, it can be really helpful if you want to know if the sun will appear in your, in your viewfinder or not. So I'll also open up this third layer where we have a third camera. So now you can see you have three different cameras uh, all you know, looking at this model from different angles, but the sun is parallel for them all. Like all the, uh, at each of these vantage points, this here, that, or that, the sun seems to come from, from a infinitely, from an infinite distance because 
it doesn't matter from where you're looking, all the lines towards that object are parallel. So we can keep we can keep rotating this. We can rotate. Now we have elevated or we have lowered the elevation of the sun, so it's it's a, it's a lower, much lower incoming sun, and now we can let it traverse the sky by R Z, and then you can see how it's in a different location, so to speak. It looks at the model from a it shines its light from a different angle. And then if you in this particular case you can see well uh, this camera here it's it is only it's this one here relates to that so it's it doesn't have the sun in the viewfinder and this camera here doesn't have the sun in the viewfinder either because its marker is here and of course the same is true for this one so if I would like to make sure I want to look at this scene with the sun coming in from that angle so I want to move this over here a little bit to get a better look at the view and then I can rotate the camera R Z like this so now I'm looking at that scene the, the sky or, or the sun is shining on these objects and casting a shadow as if it was you know late late afternoon or something so I'll do control zero to be in that camera and then I'll press F12 and you can see how the sun is over there and it's shining down on these objects here and now this is a real hazy sound, uh, hazy light and because I have this um, obstruction here uh, I'm sh putting a shadow like it's casting its shadow down here too uh, there's no illumination so what I'll do here is I'll go back to 3D view and um, I look at the Sun and I will change the, the intensity I'll just change it to 1 and then we'll do the same thing again just render that and see it looks a little bit more reasonable so the sun is up here and it's casting shadows like that and if you if I choose another camera like the the for instance the first camera we had we used it's looking kind of northward or whatever you want to call it or, or south maybe yeah south control zero to go into it and then I can render that I can see the indicator here in the sky but now I can see I know the sun is coming from the over to the right at a pretty low angle and it's casting this shadow so this this is a way to to understand how the sun works because it's kind of confusing uh, when you're trying to place it somewhere to get a certain illumination it doesn't seem to make any difference because the the truth is it's only the rotation and it's in terms of its uh, so to speak east and western rotation it's the Z uh, rotation that matters and otherwise it just depends on how it's pointing how you want to um, which of the other angles that you want to or which of the other axes you want to rotate it around sometimes you can get a little bit strange effects if you're um, looking at if you have it in a straightforward um, uh, I'll show you this here We'll set the rotation to zero, zero, zero. Uh, first, and then I want to rotate it uh, x, y, minus 90, I think. And we can look at it in this one here. And it's, it's almost just above the horizon. And um, so I can possibly rotate it Rx, and I rotate it like that. So it's a little bit higher up. The, and the, okay, that's good. And then if I rotate it in the Y axis, like 90, like that, and then 
generate it, then it becomes kind of an elongated sun. And I don't think that that's what it's supposed to be, but I've noticed that, that what ha that's what happens. Because in this scenario, rotating it in the Y direction really shouldn't make any sense. So, that's just my personal observation. Just keep track of how you're rotating it and, and you'll find out if it's, if it's working the way you want it to. But to use a elongated cube like this with these constraints, it's copied to the location of the camera with an offset so you can push it out of the viewfinder's way. And then also copy, and that's important of course, copy the rotation of the sun that way it will always point to where the sun is in the in the picture that way you know if you will have the sun in your uh, in your image or not where the light is coming from how the shadows will be cast and all that so it's a very helpful little tool and i think that that's enough for this tutorial i hope this was not too confusing because the sun can the the way it works could be there's a lot of parameters, there's a lot to play around with, and uh, to use this help tool really makes it possible for you to kind of get a grip on what's happening, otherwise everything is just floating around, so that's why I uh, wanted to bring this up. So thank you for listening, uh, like, favorite, subscribe, whatever. Uh, I'll be back with more on the sun just in the next tutorial. Thank you.